So to find the oil viscosity at uh, pressures above the bubble point, we're going to be using equations 3.56 and 3.57. So we have the viscosity of oil is going to equal to our viscosity of our oil at bubble point, which we have uh, right here, um, times our pressure of interest, which for our case is going to be 4,000 psi, uh, divided by our bubble point pressure, which is going to be 2,634 um, to the C power. And the constant C uh, comes from the equation 2.6 times the pressure of interest, which is going to be uh, 4,000. So it's going to be P to the 1.187 E to the negative 11.513 plus 8.98 times 10 to the negative fifth times your pressure of interest again, which is going to be 4,000. So C is going to equal to, so C will be equal to 0 0.3424. And plugging the C into the equation above and using that the viscosity of oil bubble points 0 0.3778, we're gonna get 0 0.3778. Which remember uh, pressure will be 4,000 PSI because it's a pressure of interest here divided by our bubble point pressure. To the power of C, which is zero. So we get that our viscosity of our oil at 4,000 PSI is going to be equal to 0 0.4358 center points. And once we find that, um, we are pretty much done with all the oil properties. Um, next, we can start working on the gas properties. And like I said earlier, um, there is no free gas at bubble point or above bubble point. So there is no, thing, no such thing as like viscosity of your gas. There's no like uh, gas formation volume factor, um, density of gas. Those really don't exist when your pressure is above bubble point. So we kind of ignore them for the PVT table. So the only pressures of interest we're going to have for the, um, the gas properties is going to be at 2000 PSI. And so the first thing uh, we'll do is we'll find our compressibility factor, which also known as Z factor. So this is used uh, a couple steps. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is find what your critical pressure is and what your critical temperature is of the fluid. And you do this by using your specific gravity of your gas um, and going to be in equations 3.60 and 3.61. And once you find what these PP, what PPC, uh, TPC is, so your critical uh, pressure um, of your gas and then your critical pressure of your gas, you're going to be finding your pseudo reduced temperature and your pseudo reduced pressure, which is just your pressure of interest or your temperature of interest um, divided by your critical pressure and your critical temperature. So I'll write that on the board. So if you're, so to find your pseudo reduced uh, temperature, it's going to be the temperature of your, uh, well, it's going to be a 580 ranking. So for these, we're going to be using ranking. So it's going to be 580, and it's going to be divided by your TPC. And then so for T, sorry, PPR, so here. So for PPR, it's going to equal P over P, PC. And an important note um, is kind of out of the scope of this class is so for, for our case for standing cats anyway, you'll see that temperature, your reduced temperature is always going to be greater than uh, one. Um, you can have a pseudo reduced temperature less than one, but in this isotherm will actually be passing through like the two phase region, which then it gets crazy with Z factor. Then you have to worry about the Z factor of liquids, but I don't believe we'll be worrying about that. So our cases, if your TPR is less than one, you might want to check your units to make sure you're using ranking or uh, something might be wrong. And remember, to get to ranking, you have your Fahrenheit. You add 460 to whatever your Fahrenheit is to get to ranking. 
And so we can find what our TPC is and our PPC is using equation 3.60 and 3.61, where our input is a specific gravity of gas. So for PPC, we're going to have the equation 756.8 minus 131 times specific gravity of gas. Um, for a lot of these um, things we've talked about, you're mainly going to see these in 410, um, stuff we've done so far. And now stuff like we're doing the Z factor, you'll start seeing in like also 475, uh, PNG 410, PNG 475, maybe a little bit of PNG 405. Um, and these concepts will build on each other as you get to later classes like 430 and 480. But this is like actually a really good introduction to um, those classes so you already have some background information going in. So, uh, so this is this equation that we're going to have minus 3.6 have specific gravity of the gas squared. And so for our TPC, it's going to be 169.2 plus 349.5 times specific gravity of gas minus 74 times specific gravity of gas squared. So our specific gravity of gas is going to be 0 0.7 and so you're only going to have one PPC, so, so uh, critical temperature and critical pressure for the fluid for the scope of this class. And so for our PPC, we will be getting 663. PPC will equal 663. 663.336 PSIA. Um, critical temperature will be your TPC will equal 377.59 ranking. And so using uh, these equations up here for your pseudo reduce and pseudo reduce or pseudo reduce pressure and pseudo reduce temperature, we know that the temperature is going to be 580. So we can just plug that in right now, TPR is going to equal 580 over our TPC, which is going to be 377.6, which is going to give us a value of about 1.536. And then for our PPR, it's going to be, because like I said, our pressure of interest is going to be below the bubble point because like your, your these don't really exist above the bubble point because you're not going to have free gas. So that's why we're going to do it for 2000 PSI. So our PPR was going to be um, 2000 PSI over 663.336. Which is going to equal, and these are units of PSI, going to equal about three. Uh, and these are the reduced properties, they're unit list because you're dividing by the same, or have the same units on the numerator and denominator. And so once you have your reduced temperature and reduced pressure, you look at your standing catch chart to find where they intersect to find your Z value. And so on your standing cats chart, it's only valid for, like I said, like reduced temperatures uh, above one. So how a Z works, or I guess if this is Z, this is going to be your pseudo reduced pressure. So each line you see on your standing cats chart is for a different isotherm, meaning you have the same temperature. So for this case, we have one temperature, so that just means we'll have one line. And so it might look something like this. And so as you notice with standing cats, there's uh, two different X axes. There's the top and the bottom. The reason there's two different ones is to model the graph in different ways. So like your um, uh, top of your, the top of your graph will be for like lower pseudo reduced pressures. So say from like here to here. And then at the bottom of your graph, you have greater pseudo reduced pressures, which is gonna like model from like here to here. And so it's just a different way to um, have the graph so like models different parts of uh, your compressibility factor. So for our case, we have a pretty low pseudo reduced pressure, so it's going to be falling within the first area of the range. And so when we look at standing catch chart, we find that our Z 
factor for uh, 2000 PSI will be, it'll be 0 0.825. So pretty close to 0 0.83 for our uh, Z factor. And so this Z factor will be used to find things such as um, your density of your gas. Um, so I can just write that up here, your equation. So your density of your gas is going to be uh, pressure times your molecular weight of your gas divided by Z, R, T, where T is in ranking. Z is your compressibility factor you just found. R is a constant, which is 10.73. Um, P is your pressure of interest, which is, in this case is going to be 2,000 PSI, and your molecular weight, I'll show you how to calculate uh, right now. So you have a specific gravity of your gas, which is relative to your, um, the density of air, which is 28.97 uh, pounds per pound mole, I believe is the, yeah, pound per pound mole. So it's going to be your um, molecular weight of your gas divided by your molecular weight of air, which is going to be equal 28.97 pound per pound mole. This is a little different with, for liquids. For liquids, your, um, your specific gravity is relative to the density of water. And so it would be um, specific gravity like oil, for example, is equal to your density, your oil divided by density of water, which water density is going to be one gram uh, per cc. And so that's why, like, and, you know, oil floats on top of water, meaning it's less dense. And that's why your specific gravity, the gravities of your oil you see are less than one. And so, for example, like, we found ours to be 0 0.81556. So to get the molecular weight of our gas, we know what our gamma G is. It's 0 0.7. We know what our molecular weight of our air is. is 28.97. We just multiply the two to get our molecular weight of our gas. So the molecular weight of the gas will be... 20.279 pound per pound mole. And then we can plug that into this equation right here to find what our density is at 2,000 PSI of the gas. So we know our pressure is 2,000. Molecular weight is 20.279. We know that Z is 0.825. We know that R is 10.73, and R is just a conversion factor. Um, and then temperature is going to be in ranking, which is going to be 580. Oh, no, that's right, that's right. We got density of the gas to be 7.8994 pound per foot cubed. And another thing you may see in the notes a lot of times is 5.615. This is just a conversion to go between feet uh, and barrel, cubic feet and barrels. And so basically, if you have a value that's, let's say, you have one barrel, but you want to turn it into uh, cubic feet, you just multiply this by 5.615. Because the units of this are feet cubed in a barrel. And similarly, if you have, uh, like, say, two cubic feet and you want to convert it to barrels, you just divide by the 5.615. All that is is a unit conversion factor. Um, from here, we can find our uh, let's see, f uh, gas formation volume factor, which is BG. And so this is somewhat similar. Uh, I mean, you, you'll see this uh, used in later classes like 475, 410, and especially in like 430. Um, and so BG, I'll just write it up here while I have some space. VG is going to be equal to, and like I said, you can have this like in uh, feet cubed, or you can have it like in terms of like barrels for like SCF, like however you uh, would like to notation. It just depends if you wanna have the 5.615 in there or not. So VG is going to equal Z times your temperature of your reservoir fluid times your pressure at standard conditions, which is 14.7 PSI. Your temperature at standard conditions, which is 60 degrees Fahrenheit or um, 520 degrees ranking. Um, and then times your pressure of your reservoir. So in our case for 2000 PSI, 
we're going to have uh, 0 0.825 times like temperature reservoir, which is going to be 580, because this has to be in ranking, 580 times 14.7 divided by 520 times, uh, is that, like I said, it's going to be at 2,000 PSI. So our BG is going to be 0 0.00. 676. And because we didn't have uh, the 5.615 in this case, it's going to be feet cubed per SCF. If you wanted it in terms of barrel per SCF, you just have a 5.615 term right there to um, make it into barrels per SCF. And so if you think about it, it makes sense that um, your BG should be a pretty low value because gas is very compressible, and so like if you have a large volume of gas, you can compress it to a small uh, volume, but if you just let it out to like room temperature conditions, like it's gonna expand a lot. So your relative volume of your uh, gas in the reservoir compared to gas at standard conditions is gonna be very small. So for equations such as this and these, they can be derived from the real gas. Um, the difference between real gas and ideal gas is real gas has a compressibility factor, Z, which really it's, all it is is a correction factor to get it towards like what it would be like as ideal. So that's what like, Z factor is, it's just a correction factor. And so with this equation, for example, you have your molecular weight, ZRT, P, and rho G. So you take the N over the other side, you have V over N. And then N can be looked at in terms of mass over molecular weight. And so you have this N over here. So this molecular weight can actually be multiplied over to the left-hand side. So you have P times V times molecular weight equals Z times mass RT. And since you have mass here and you have V over here, you can divide your V over. And so we know that um, mass over volume is going to be density. And so rearranging the equation, you can get density equals your pressure times molecular weight divided by ZRT. And then from this point, we can actually find what our viscosity of our gas would be. So the molecular weight of gas is going to be used uh, to find the viscosity of gas. And so we had our molecular weight of gas to be 20.279. So I'm just going to write that over here. 20.279. Okay, now I'm 